Hi, welcome to Dr. Vic's Academy. Today we will be talking about glomerulonephritis. Glomerulonephritis encompasses a range of immune-mediated disorders that cause inflammation within the glomerulus and other compartments of the kidney. The course and prognosis of glomerulonephritis is often dependent on the type of glomerular disease, based on histology, as well as the response to treatment. Classification There are three ways to classify glomerular diseases. Glomerulonephritis can be classified according to the clinical presentation, or by histology. It can also be classified as primary or secondary types. In the former, the pathology is limited to the kidney. Whereas in the latter, a systemic condition is associated with renal involvement. The Clinical Syndromes Approach Classification of glomerulonephritis according to the clinical presentation is the simplest and most effective tool for the clinician. Although each clinical presentation can be associated with several distinct types of glomerulonephritis defined by etiology and pathology. The approach to diagnosis and management is best directed by the clinical presentation. Major clinical syndromes of glomerulonephritis. Isolated microscopic or gross hematuria. Isolated proteinuria. Asymptomatic hematuria and proteinuria. Hematuria and proteinuria, in isolation or in combination are very common and may afflict as much as 2% of the general population. As only a small proportion of patients with these symptoms or signs have significant glomerular disease, the vast majority of these patients would not be subjected to a renal biopsy. Patients with these abnormalities should however undergo a full evaluation so as to identify those with significant renal disease. Acute Nephritic Syndrome the acute nephritic syndrome presenting with edema associated with gross hematuria and hypertension is easily visible. Often the etiology is post-infectious glomerulonephritis. Bacteria for example streptococci, viruses and parasites can all cause this entity. As the diagnosis is often made following an infection, a renal biopsy may be deferred. Recovery is the rule. Generally, patients have a good prognosis with 95% renal survival at 5 years and 90% at 10 years. Treatment is often symptomatic and supportive. Nephrotic Syndrome Patients with the nephrotic syndrome present with the classical triad of edema, proteinuria of more than 3 grams per day, and hypoalbuminemia at less than 30 grams per liter. Primary glomerulonephritis is the most common cause of this condition. Secondary glomerulonephritis can cause nephrotic syndrome as a result of kidney involvement from autoimmune diseases like SLE, cryoglobulinemia and thyrotoxicosis. Drugs are also a possible secondary cause, for example gold, penicillamin, captopril and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Rarer causes such as infections including hepatitis B, C, malaria and human immunodeficiency virus. Amyloidosis, as well as malignancies such as those of the lung, gastrointestinal tract, lymphoma and myeloma should also be considered in the evaluation. Nephritic Nephrotic Syndrome This syndrome presents with features of both nephritic and nephrotic syndrome. SLE often needs to be considered in this context. Rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. This is a term applied for acute nephritis that results in rapid loss of kidney function taking place over a period of weeks to months. Rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis is a medical emergency, demanding urgent histological diagnosis and treatment to prevent renal failure. Good Pustures Syndrome and Wegener's Granulomatosis are some conditions associated with this very severe form of glomerular inflammation. Histopathological Classification Although the clinical presentation can often provide clues to the underlying glomerular pathology, a renal biopsy is often necessary as several glomerular conditions can result in the same clinical syndrome. The biopsy is useful to help determine the nature and severity of the underlying glomerular pathology, to prognosticate and to guide treatment.
a simplified histopathological classification for primary glomerulonephritis is listed. Minimal change disease. Focal global sclerosis. Diffuse mesangial proliferative GN. Focal mesangial proliferative GN. Membranous GN. Mesangio capillary GN crescenteric GN, also known as rapidly progressive GN. Focal and segmental glomerular sclerosis. Diffuse sclerosing GN. Iganephropathy, comprising 45% of GN, is likely the commonest GN. Of note is that asymptomatic hematuria and proteinuria is the commonest mode of presentation of this condition. This would suggest that careful screening for glomerular disease and its early identification can lead to prompt and appropriate management. Strategies should be directed at managing the specific conditions so that their progression to end-stage renal failure can be ameliorated. Principles of treatment. The management of GN is often targeted at treat. In several phases of the condition, general management includes treatment of hypertension, edema and hyperlipidemia. Specific treatment measures include those directed at the underlying pathology as well as those directed at retardation of progression of renal failure. Often the glomerular pathology can be considered as progressing in two phases. Immunological phase. The acute or early phase is referred to as the immunological phase, in which antibodies, immune complexes and cytokine-mediated mechanisms initiate glomerular injury. These immune-mediated mechanisms can be ameliorated by Immunosuppressive drugs. Hypofiltration phase. With progression of disease, a chronic or late phase occurs due to injury resulting from glomerular hypofiltration. Glomerular hypofiltration is associated with increasing proteinuria, elevated serum creatinine, and hypertension. This phase is mainly supportive and is targeted at controlling hypertension and protein restriction. Evaluation and follow up. Patients with glomerulonephritis should be evaluated to establish the type of glomerulonephritis, and identify its severity. Testing for baseline level of renal function and degree of proteinuria should be done. Renal biopsy and other investigations should be performed if indicated. Patients should then be followed up to assess progression of glomerulonephritis. Renal function, proteinuria and other markers should continue to be monitored on follow-up as indicated by the type of glomerulonephritis and severity of condition. The severity of kidney disease should be identified based on these markers as the disease progresses over time. Specific therapy of glomerulonephritis should be instituted as indicated by type and severity of underlying condition. Patients with glomerulonephritis and more severe proteinuria, renal dysfunction or hypertension are at high risk for progression to end-stage renal failure. These patients should undergo evaluation by a nephrologist, for renal biopsy and institution of specific measures to halt the progression of renal disease, general measures in the management of glomerulonephritis. The general measures in the management of glomerulonephritis are designed to ameliorate the path of physiological processes contributing to progressive renal damage. Blood pressure management. Control of blood pressure has been demonstrated to retard the progression of renal failure in virtually all forms of renal disease. Treatment of hypertension in patients with glomerulonephritis also reduces the risk for cardiovascular disease. A target blood pressure less than 125 over 75 mm mercury height is recommended for patients with glomerulonephritis and proteinuria more than 1 gram per day. A target blood pressure less than 130 over 80 mm mercury height is recommended for patients with glomerulonephritis and proteinuria less than 1 gram per day. Angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors are recommended as preferred treatment of hypertension in patients with glomerulonephritis as they confer greater inno protection. Angiotensin receptor blockers can be used as an alternative to ACE inhibitors to treat hypertension in patients with glomerulonephritis. Reducing proteinuria. 
Angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors should be used to reduce proteinuria and retard progression. In the absence of hypertension, in patients with glomerulonephritis, angiotensin receptor blockers can be used as an alternative to ACE inhibitors. Target level of proteinuria with therapy has been recommended to be less than 0.5 grand per day so as to accrue maximal benefit in reno protection. Lipids lowering therapy. Patients with GN and renal dysfunction are at high risk of dyslipidemia and atherosclerotic vascular disease. It has been estimated that patients with chronic kidney disease have a 10-year risk of coronary heart disease events greater than 20%. These patients should be treated with cholesterol-reducing diet and statins. Treatment with statins can reduce their risk for progression of renal disease, as it is likely that dyslipidemia is both a consequence and cause of renal dysfunction. Targets for LDL cholesterol with therapy in patients with GN and renal dysfunction should be less than 100 mg per deciliter. Vaccination Vaccination against influenza and pneumococcus is recommended in all patients with nephrotic syndrome or chronic kidney disease. Attenuated viral vaccines are safe, however live viral vaccines are contraindicated in patients who are heavily immunosuppressed with steroid or other immunosuppressant. The response to vaccination in immunosuppressed patients may be decreased. Audio jungle. Audio Jungle